In Lesson 2.1, students compare the dissolving of salt and sugar in water. The idea is to see whether different substances dissolve to a different extent. And students will discover that salt and sugar do have a characteristic degree to which they dissolve in water, and that substances have a characteristic solubility, and that you can identify a substance based on how much it dissolves in water. So part of the lesson is having a discussion with students about how to set up a fair solubility test. The idea is to put the same amount of salt and sugar in two cups, add the same amount of water, and swirl them in the same way for the same length of time to see which one dissolves the most. And eventually, students will see that sugar dissolves completely but there's some salt left behind. So what the teacher does next is introduces an unknown alum to the experiment. Instead of telling students which is salt, sugar, and alum, they're just labeled A, B, and C. The idea is for students to use what they've seen, what they already know about salt and sugar, to see if they can use a dissolving test to identify the salt and the sugar, and the other one must be the unknown. So let's take a look. Again, you could talk to students about the best way to do a fair test here, and it would be to add the same amount of each substance to the same type of cup, add the same amount of water at the same time, swirl in the same way, and then see what your results are. So what students see is that letter B ended up dissolving completely, and that agrees with what happened to sugar when they did it in the previous experiment. There's a small amount left over in C, just like salt was in the previous experiment, but there's a lot left over in A. So A is probably the unknown. It's the one that doesn't agree much at all with what they saw before. And it's true, the A is alum, which is less soluble in water than either sugar or salt. So the question is, why do different substances have different solubilities? And you can explore that a little bit with an animation. So here we're adding the same amount of sugar, salt, and alum to three identical cups. We're adding the same amount of water. And we're swirling in the same way. And our results show that there's no sugar left, that there's a small amount of salt, but a fair amount of alum remains. So why would that be? So we take a look. Salt, sugar, and alum are all made up of different atoms and molecules. Therefore, water interacts with them differently and dissolves them differently. So we're not trying to make a claim that because sugar is a certain way, it dissolves the most, or because salt is a certain way, it dissolves intermediate and that alum molecules are a certain way that it dissolves the least. We're just saying that since they're all different, water interacts with them differently, and so they dissolve to different extents. You could show students a graph showing the different solubilities of salt and sugar. A traditional solubility test is done over a range of temperatures. So this shows that sugar is more soluble than salt, and as the temperature increases, more and more sugar goes into solution. Now salt, as the temperature increases, the amount of salt that dissolves in water stays about the same. And over the entire range of temperatures, the number of grams of sugar that dissolves in water is always greater than the number of grams of salt that dissolves. There's another test you can do to distinguish between sugar, salt, and alum. And it's kind of interesting. Alum has a pretty neat characteristic where it can be used to clump particles together. There's the same amount of dirty water in each cup. And what students will do is they'll put in the same amount of sugar, salt, and alum in each sample of dirty water and stir for maybe like a minute or so. And then after about 10 minutes, after they're done stirring, the samples of dirty water will look pretty much like they look below, that the alum has clumped the dirt and the water is much cleaner 
than either the salt or the sugar. For the NGSS standard 5 PS11, develop a model to describe that matter is made of particles too small to be seen. This lesson supports the standard in that students see that the particles that make up the substances influence a phenomena like dissolving. The way water molecules interact with the molecules or ions of a substance is what makes it dissolve to a certain extent. If you look at the foundation boxes, developing and using models, students look at the models of salt, sugar, and alum to understand how dissolving works on the molecular level. For the disciplinary core ideas for structure and properties of matter, that this idea that matter can be subdivided into particles, that's shown using the phenomena of dissolving. And the idea that students can do a test and make a type of measurement and identify a substance based on its characteristic properties. For cross-cutting concepts, scale, proportion, and quantity, that objects exist from the very small to the immensely large, we're looking at matter at the extremely small level of atoms and molecules. For cause and effect, the structure of a substance, the atoms or molecules it's made of, and how they're arranged determines the extent to which it dissolves in a liquid. So thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.